Hello and welcome to another Huns History Nest podcast, where history is enjoyed and salvaged forever. Part 2 of Colonial Development. This is going to take us from Massachusetts Bay County through the end of colonization. The Massachusetts Bay Colony was founded by Puritans, and it's important that we realize that these Puritans are really quite different from those of the Puritan separatists which existed at the Plymouth Colony. The Massachusetts Bay Colony is going to be made up primarily of three areas. The Salem, Massachusetts area, which will be these new arriving Puritans. The Plymouth Colony of Old, but also the town of Boston, all of which are seen down here on the map, Boston being right here. These three towns will make up the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The success of this colony is going to be due to primarily four reasons. Um, natural childbirth, better farming, better shelter, and because of this more people will come. All of this is related due to the fact that these are individuals that are coming with a vast educational background which is going to help them to survive and do well here in the new world. The Massachusetts Bay Colony will elect an individual by the name of John Winthrop to be their governor in the year 1636. This individual is going to put together a general court. This general court is very different than what we might think of courts because it's going to have religious law combined with civil law. Civil law is something like we obey today like stopping your car at a red light. Religious law would be something that would be like go to church on Sunday. Now today, going missing church on Sundays isn't going to get you arrested. Perhaps going through a red light may. But this is what makes this very different, this general court of sorts, is that it's enforcing both types of law. The major goal of doing this is that he wanted to create a model society. He deemed it in one of his speeches a city upon a hill. And this city upon a hill speech, which is found in a model of Christian charity, he attempts to develop what is known as a commonwealth society. This commonwealth society is an attempt for all people to look after each other's best interests, but also to enforce law upon each other. And that can be even within your own family structure. This is all being done because Puritans truly believe that they are destined for some specific route in their life. This is known as predestination. And the idea here is, is that some people are going to be set aside from others or saved. These people would be the leaders. And this is who... John Winthrop considered himself to be. Obviously, this type of a lifestyle is going to be very difficult, and the demands, the vigor required will take its toll on members, and several will begin to leave or be removed or excommunicated, kicked out of the colony. This type of lifestyle, this general court, will ultimately, at its very conclusion, um, come about because of the Salem Witchcraft Trials. And the Salem Witchcraft Trials is really a bunch of teenage girls whose sort of curiosity has gone wild. And what I mean by this is we had a situation in which a book written by a Puritan minister, Cotton Mather, published um, the findings in Boston about a possible possession or witchcraft, and some teenage girls got a hold of this book and became rather intrigued by it. They then sat down one evening with one of the house servants or slaves, a woman by the name of Tichaba, 
and she told stories about when she was a individual back in Barbados and these stories were told to these young ladies and resulted in these girls covering up a secret where they had listened to the stories of Tichaba and so forth and as a result one particular young by the name of Betty had some serious reservations about what she participated in. The other girls, they all attempt to cover up Betty's um, perhaps wanting to turn them in and they began to accuse others in the community of being witches. The end result was um, sadly enough that 19 individuals will be hanged, another will be um, crushed to death in a rock piling incident. The bottom line is it becomes quite a fiasco in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. The end result here will be that the general court will be dismissed by the governor of Massachusetts Bay and this will set the stage for the concept of separation of church and state which we today in the United States of America hold uh, as one of our fine attributes. Prior to the witchcraft trials, the individuals by the name of Roger Williams and Anna Hutchinson will be two individuals that will fall under the uh, power of John Winthrop, the governor that created the general court. Both of them will be exiled, as stated here, or kicked out of the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Roger Williams here will be removed because he was forced to um, leave Salem because he proposed some diverse, new, and dangerous opinions, all of which John Winthrop and the general court disagreed with. He will find um, a place to live, and he will name it Providence, and this will become a new colony eventually to become known as Rhode Island. Joining Roger Williams will be Anne Hutchinson, otherwise known as Anne the Heretic. And she will be removed because she believed firmly in this idea of free grace theology. This is the idea that every person can obtain eternal life if they believed. The Puritans didn't believe this. They believed you had to be an individual that was saved or a specific idea of predestination to actually be um, a person to enter eternal life. So these two were removed because of their different opinions with John Winthrop. Another colony that will be formed as a result of people leaving Massachusetts Bay Colony is going to be the colony of Connecticut and this will be founded by a Puritan minister by the name of Thomas Hooker and he is going to find this colony well before the Salem witchcraft trials and this is going to be founded on the idea of separation of government with religion and civil law being separate. Um, and he will, perhaps the most important thing that will be created here is the fundamental orders of Connecticut, um, known to be perhaps our first constitution in the new world. Um, thus we're starting to see that several people are being either removed from Massachusetts Bay or they're leaving on their own. The next or third colony to be formed from people leaving um, Massachusetts Bay is going to be the colony of New Hampshire. And New Hampshire will be actually founded by Anne Hutchinson's close friend, her minister that she truly liked, and his name was John Wheelwright. And this will be founded officially in the year 1691, but people will have been going to places like Little Harbor, Dover, Portsmouth, etc. for several years prior to that. So we're starting to see that these are the colonies being formed from people leaving Massachusetts Bay. This will round out the New England colonies in the New World. And the New England colonies is written here are basically four colonies, Massachusetts Bay. But the others are all founded by people leaving Massachusetts Bay. Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. The next colony that we're going to look at here is the founding of the Colony of Maryland. And Maryland was founded in 1634. It was founded by a guy named Sir George Calvin. He was nicknamed Lord Baltimore. He was a lord back in England and his family pretty well off. 
he is going to be given this land because the king owes his family money. Uh, this will become a proprietary colony, which means that one person owns the colony. And he's going to name it in honor of Queen Mary, who was the last of the Catholic monarchs. And thus it becomes known as Maryland. And the whole idea here is that this is a place of free worship for all Christians. Catholics, of course, back in England, um, are ostracized, treated very poorly, and so this is going to be a place where they can come and pray and do so without being harmed. The next colony that we're going to look at is the colony of Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania was founded by William Penn. That's where we get the Pennsylvania. And it was founded by a group of individuals known to be Quakers. The true title of this religious group is actually the Society of Friends. The term Quaker is actually a negative um, connotation idea for them. And it dates back to the inception of this religion with George Fox. And as the story goes, George Fox was put on trial for blasphemy. And according to Fox's journal, um, they were called Quakers because he bid them to tremble at the word of God. He replied something to the liking of, I am quaking in my boots. And that's, this is how we get Quaker. It's derogatory towards George Fox. George Fox ultimately will, after his trial, uh, William Penn will become one of the leaders of this group. And William Penn will lead people to the new world. Um, and here, Quakers are going to be able to practice uh, their faith. The thing that separates Quakers predominantly from the Puritans is that they are pacifists. They are against violence. Um, they also believe in finding their own inner light. Um, and then they like to testify these experiences before each other. Uh, thus, everybody is equal in the eyes of God. This is also where we get the concept here of brotherly love, which ultimately becomes the city of Philadelphia. Philadelphia has thus become and known as the city of brotherly love because of this uh, equality amongst all people. Rounding out the last few colonies here, uh, and we'll go through these rather quickly, the colony of New York, and this will be uh, founded by Lord York um, and taken from the Dutch by military force. The colony of New Jersey, founded in 1665 with Delaware, um, and these are going to be the English colonies that will be primarily established for lumber. The Carolinas, uh, these are named after uh, King Charles' wife, Queen Caroline. Uh, that's why we have Charlestown there. And lastly and finally, Georgia, and we will investigate Georgia in our next set of notes. But this is one of the colonies that's going to be established to protect the South from any attack from Spain, who controls Florida at this time. And so they're trying to prevent any type of attacks. Uh, James Oglethorpe, he will be the individual that will be in charge of uh, Georgia. And this sort of brings us to the conclusion of these colonies. And one thing to notice is that all the colonies are divided into three distinct groups, the New England, the Middle, and the Southern colonies. Um, remember, as I said here, that Massachusetts Bay is the one sort of that gave rise to the others. The middle colony seen here, these ones an emphasis in terms of, you know, religious purposes for Pennsylvania. And then we have the southern colonies here. And it is of importance to note that this is where plantation farming per predominate, predominates all of the economy here. Uh, we have cash crops and so forth. And over here, all of these New England colonies are all based on uh, the religious origin, which comes from the Puritans, as we took a look at. Um, so it's going to be of necessity to look at all of these areas and what separates these colonies, some generalizations, some similarities, and dislikes. This is a the end of the colonization uh, podcast, and I hope this is helpful.